Uh, good morning, everyone, or good evening. Uh, my name is Timothy Gurgis. Um, I'm Director of Product Management for the Topology and Morphing Area. Um, today, we're very excited to present uh, some of the changes that are coming in for 2025. Um, and uh, and with that, I'm going to hand over to Preetam. And I will be presenting what's coming up from the geometry standpoint in 2025. Uh, so the first uh, uh, enhancement is under the sketching tools. Uh, now we have added imprint on surface option. So what this does is this is equivalent to our topology sketching um, where we can draw geometries on the uh, surfaces, for example, and if they are line uh, entities or we have, we don't uh, fill it with the surface, then you have an option of in auto imprinting it. This is in efforts to uh, at some point replace the topology and the limited option that we have under sketching uh, for topology. So once we replace that with the whole sketching tools, uh, we have a lot more options and a lot more uh, functionalities available. So wherever you are creating a new sketch, for example, let me actually play this video. So uh, whenever you create a new sketch on a surface, uh, that surface becomes the reference. You can draw it on that surface. And so once the sketching is done, if you have checked on the imprint on surface option, then you can see that uh, it actually gets imprinted when you exit out of uh, the, the sketching mode. Same thing is true for the projection as well. So if under the uh, project option of creating sketch, if you are creating or projecting it on a, a surface, then we can project the sketch that you are drawing onto the surface and uh, auto imprinting it when you come out of it. So these these are automatically realized as you know, lines and then that's how they are uh, imprinted. The next uh, exciting thing is to support um, our Boolean tools uh, for FE geometry. So let me actually play this video uh, while I'm describing it. So we had solid uh, Boolean for CAD, which uh, would combine solids, subtract and intersect. Now we have added the same capabilities for FE geometry as well. So as you can see that, uh, and this is for surface meshing, of course, uh, even though these are solids, uh, these are not really 3D mesh inside, but the uh, the shell mesh uh, from the outside. So uh, you, you can see that it actually nicely combines all the solids uh, together. Um, you know, and uh, the same type of support is added uh, when you find it and uh, whether you want to have common interface or not. Uh, subtract is much uh, easier. Um, uh, by the way, a lot more efforts have gone into uh, making the combine very uh, user friendly as well as handle a lot of um, uh, stability issues and a lot of complex models, to be honest. Uh, combine operation is, is very complex. Uh, uh, Two solids or FE geometry solids have to uh, intersect a lot more depends on the tolerancing also. So we have made uh, code uh, a lot more stable. It's a very new code uh, per se from the old code that is in subtract and intersect, but it's very stable. A uh, lot of um, uh, testing has you know gone through. Um, so here is an example of uh, FE geometry uh, subtract. Uh, again, the same tools and same um, options are supported for CAD as well um, that are supported for FE geometry, for example, keeping the tool, uh, subtracting it, uh, deleting the tool, uh, and then the same is true for intersect as well. So all of the options that you see in CAD are also su uh, supported for FE geometry. Here uh, we are seeing intersect operation where you can select two solids. You can either keep targets uh, while intersecting or you can keep the tools. Uh, you can switch it as it's showing it here and you can see the outcome and uh, you can uh, do the both, which kind of looks like the combined operation to be honest. So that's about the FE geometry support for Boolean. 
there was actually a small uh, request that uh, we did not include from the panels about creation of the lines based off of uh, node cloud data. So now under the polyline, you can select all the nodes by window and uh, create a polyline. So that's about uh, from my side. Uh, let me hand over to Salim for the next uh, portion of the slides. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Salim and uh, I'll be discussing uh, further developments towards topology for 2025. Uh, firstly, coming uh, with the preferences and this is one of the major changes uh, and it fits in uh, what, with what uh, we are working towards, uh, you know, having, uh, you know, meshing and geometry combined and unified workflows. Uh, in regard of that, uh, we have also combined the preferences under the topology tab for meshing and geometry. Uh, and those are uh, rightly organized so that um, a user will be able to find them easily and tune it certain parameters and settings uh, to be able to get the right topology what uh, user is expecting. So uh, this is uh, one of the major uh, developments towards uh, you know, organizing the topology in a right way. Uh, going further, we have also added a new preference uh, for creating either a free form or a map mesh. Uh, especially when we are creating a geometry, we create uh, it along with a mesh. And uh, this preference uh, drives uh, what mesh is going to come along with that. Uh, if it is a map mesh, uh, it will basically take the link opposite edges and make sure it's creating quads and uh, give uh, appropriate mesh there. Uh, if the preference is free form, then uh, we will go with the free form settings and uh, it will try to obey the uh, average element size and all of that uh, with, with respect to the free form settings. So uh, this will give us a benefit when we, whenever we are uh, using say extrude and we would like to have a map mesh, uh, we can globally set it and uh, we can get the mesh out of it whenever we are creating a geometry. Um, going further uh, with with respect to extrude, we have added uh, you know a target as a lines as well. Earlier it was only supported as surfaces and the elements or, or the facets. Uh, now along with that, we'll all also support the target and uh, as a lines. Uh, and this is one of the most requested items. Uh, whenever uh, there's no target uh, surface well defined, and if user would like to use it as a lines, uh, there is an option now for user to be using that. Um, and going further, uh, this is in continuation to uh, our previous developments regarding organizing the topology better. Uh, so whenever we are creating a geometry or a topology and uh, it should be adhering uh, to the preference, creating preference in the uh, uh, global settings, what we have as creating option. So now uh, along uh, with the other uh, tools, uh, extend and points also adhere uh, to the same preference uh, so that user will be able to control that whether uh, it's it needs to be the newly created uh, surfaces or points whether they need to be organized in current original or new uh, that is also well defined now uh, so with this i'll um, conclude my session and i'll hand over to natalia for further developments on hello um, i'm natalia I, I will present the updates we did on MidMesh tool. Uh, so to improve this tool, uh, we have expanded its core functionality by adding two available methods for mesh generation. The one is casting and the other one is extrusion. Uh, casting is the original approach uh, and it is suitable for complex freeform surfaces. It has basically the same functionality as the tool had so far. Uh, but uh, it cannot handle so well the extrusions. So when it comes for these cases, such as pipes, beams, or uh, linear parts in general, uh, the extrusion method uh, is more effective. Each one has uh, different default parameters, uh, which are automatically updated uh, based on the user selection. Uh, here you can see a comparison between a case with extrusion off on the left and extrusion on on the right. 
Uh, you can see that we get a cleaner and smoother result in connections. The inconsistencies at the junctions and at the edges are reduced. And uh, we now have better alignment, especially at the complex geometries, uh, like the curved surfaces over here. Uh, these are just a few of the issues that uh, we have been addressed through extrusion option. Uh, we also have automatic suppression of the green edges which can reduce significantly the effort that is required to edit the raw output of the midmes. Uh, we keep working on this to further improve it. Uh, and I will close with a video uh, to describe the process through the batch mess. That was all from me. Uh, uh, I will hand over to Stefanos to continue with morphing. Thank you all. So I'm Stefanos and I will present to you the updates that we are introducing for morphing in 2025.0. Unfortunately, with this release, we are only introducing small miscellaneous items mostly, but I would like to highlight to all of you a couple of things that we addressed. First of all, we have added advanced selection for uh, morphing for the free and proximity contexts. Uh, this is something that I'm sure will benefit uh, everyone that's using morphing as it will make it easier to use advanced selection. You could do this previously through the right mouse click, but now it is uh, better for the user and also it's uh, more consistent with the whole product. I would like to also highlight a couple of things live. For volume morphing, we, are in, we have fixed an issue where uh, the different selection methods would not uh, apply. For example, uh, you could only use the box select method and you couldn't use circle select. Now, all the selection methods can be used uh, correctly uh, for volume morphing. If, for example, I want to move some nodes, I can use uh, polyline and it works as expected, while previously this was not available. Another thing that uh, I wanted to showcase is for domain-based morphing. If we have a model like this and we want to create some domains, let's say we create 2D domains, and we want to do some operations on these domains, let's say we want to organize them and, uh, for example, combine them. Previously, when you were doing uh, operations inside morphing controllers, uh, the selections after the, you performed the, the operation that you wanted would not get cleared. Now they are, correctly get, they are correctly getting cleared so that you can perform your next operation and uh, move on. So this is another thing that we, are we have addressed with 2025.0. Finally, another thing that was fixed uh, with previous versions. Here I have a 2024.1 version where if I go and create um, the domains, 2D domains for this, it only takes a couple of uh, seconds to do, but uh, I want to highlight here that we had a bug here where for overlapping elements where they would share the same nodes, um, there would be a domain created for each element. So as you can see here for the windshield, there is one domain for each element, which is uh, not correct and would uh, create problems if, you, if you're if you using this. So we have fixed this in the newest version. And if I do the same operation on 2025.0, It only creates one domain for the whole windshield, which is uh, correct and it would be what the user would uh, expect and want. So there might be differences in domain creation on the number of domains that are created for the same model, but this is due to 
duplicate elements that were sharing nodes. And uh, this was a bug that we fixed with this version.